This, yeah, I don't think you understand how good this sweep is. I, this is like the only sweep I hit. I hit it thousands of times a year. It's like, I just see it everywhere. I constantly hit people with it. No one ever even recognizes it's a sweep because it looks so subtle. It just looks like you tripped them or just like grabbed their ankle, because you did. But it's so good and no one does it, but I do this sweep all the time. It is my most used move of all moves ever, this move. What's up guys, I've got something for you today. This is a foot sweep from the guard. So this is a nogi one and foot sweeps from nogi guard can be tricky. So watch this instructional that I've got for you today and you'll be sweeping people off your back in nogi once again. Everyone knows the nogi guard died um, RIP 2017 when everyone started going into leg locks only and the passers started figuring out how to keep uh, their posture in such a way that the more traditional reverse de la Hiva, flat on your back type guards don't quite work. So here's an alternative, kind of a throwback to one of the few sweeps that survived and is, remains highly effective to this day. But before we get into the video, just check out this deal on Jiu Jitsu X, it's Black Friday, we got 50% off and a free course when you purchase any course. So that's like 75% off actually. So check it out, see you guys at the video. All right, guys, I wanna to get to some takedown stuff today. I wanna to do some uh, takedown rounds later on, but first, there's a, this useful sweep that I've been doing that I think you guys will really benefit from in Nogi. So I usually talk to you guys a lot about staying like in a seated position and looking to kind of attack the legs and get to the legs so we can set up our single leg X in positions like that. However, he, he doesn't want me to do that. So he's always gonna be trying to drive me down or like put me on my back here. And in Nogi, as you know, once you're on your back like this, I can't really reach his legs to do anything. So he, I'm at his mercy. He's gonna turn me one way or the other. And it can be pretty tricky to start setting up an attack unless I can create some space and like get back to a seated position where my arms can be engaged. But there's this nice little trick you can do that really can off balance someone if they're super insistent on putting you flat on your back. Okay, so Jacob's gonna push me flat on my back like this, here. And you can see he kind of steps into like a pre-knee cut position. He hasn't quite knee cut yet, but his leg is here. And normally he's probably expecting me to kind of just go into like reverse De La Hiva and accept this knee cut, right? I kind of accept the reverse De La Hiva, he's driving in, and then he goes about trying to pass my guard. However, in, the, in that exact moment where he kind of steps to this side to settle in, there's an opportunity for me to grab his ankle like this. And then as I grab his ankle, my left foot goes on his hip here, okay? And as my left foot goes on his hip, I can actually extend with my left foot and take his ankle right out here very easily. And that, that's just with the left foot, but I can also do that with my right foot. So if I grab his ankle and he pushes my ankle off, I can do the same thing where my right foot goes on his hip. And then I kind of do like that worm guard pendulum here, where I do the same thing. I pendulum up and then pull his ankle like this. All right, let's try that again. So that's kind of a weird movement, but it can be really useful. So I'm not saying that this is like a super cool move or anything. I'm just saying it's very useful if someone puts you flat on your back and you manage to catch that ankle, it's just a quick sweep that can immediately, you can score on them or just reverse the position or just totally pattern interrupt their passing. So I'm here like this, he kind of steps in and I catch his ankle here. So let's say he's blocking this leg really effectively and I'm not really getting to the hip. The key here is that my knee is blocking his knee from straightening. When I extend my right knee, it's gonna straighten his leg so he can't really step that, he can't really be active with his knee and drive back into me. So my right foot's planted on his thigh. I swing my leg up, and as I swing my leg up, I pull the ankle out here. And this works best, Jacob, give me a little bit more activity here. Like if he's facing me when I'm like this, this is where the move really is effective. It's when someone's actively trying to move around because he's trying to kind of shuffle or like maneuver my legs or set up a passing position and he's like stepping. So as his feet are stepping, I kind of pull the ankle as he's stepping and moving around and that's what takes his base out. So let's do it from this angle again. So I'll actually start from a seated position like this. 
your opponent will push you back and will kind of accept that and grab the ankle here, like this. If I have the left foot on, you can do this one, but it's a little awkward. It kind of feels like that gi version of the sweep where you're like catching here like this. I actually prefer to just do it right from here because it's more of a surprise. They don't really see this coming. So Jacob, as you kind of are here, I may have to put my foot there and get kind of back up to face him here and then relax and I can start pulling the ankle. But to really engage the movement, I have to swing my leg up. So it's like I swing my leg up and at that same time, I'm extending and pulling that ankle down. So there's a little bit of like an, an explosive movement here, but it's not that tricky. Okay, one way that this also works very effectively is if he starts to step this way around my guard here and I just give him like a big shrimp this way, a lot of times they just accept that and I can immediately be in the position here where I'm grabbing the ankle and then pulling that leg right out from underneath him. You can see that you can kind of end in this awkward position where you have his foot and my leg is here and he could pull me into single leg X so just make sure when this happens, you just let go of the ankle and just go in front. You're the only thing that's blocking you from getting up here. So you just let go and come on top. If you fight that urge, because there's going to be this urge to kind of come on top with momentum, but that's going to give you this, give your opponent single leg X. So let's do it one more time. And I'd like to, you to, to do this when we're drilling a little bit actively. So maybe I'm trying to sit up and Jacob's trying to push me down here and I catch that leg. Any questions on this? You want to give it a shot here? Okay, on two, one, two. This is, where did I learn this? I'm pretty sure I just started doing this like when I was 17. It's just a weird little ankle grip. It works really effectively in the gi as well. It was kind of hard to even show it on Jacob. It works so effectively live, but it's one of those moves that if you have like a willing partner, it doesn't work. So it's hard to show the move. That's why I said kind of do it a little bit more actively so that they'll naturally fall into the position they need instead of overthinking it and being like, oh, I'm supposed to fall here, I'm supposed to do this, when really they wouldn't do that normally. So kind of an interesting move. You have to feel it for sure. Visually, it's like, oh, what is that? Like, how would that be effective? But like with a lot of jiu-jitsu moves, they don't look very cool, but when you feel what's actually happening, it's actually a really interesting move in the mechanics of why it's working. So I really suggest that you try this one live before you make any judgments. You lift your hips. As your hips go into the air, it also gives you the leverage to kind of pull the leg. So your, his foot moves just a little bit. You like kind of break the sticking force friction. And then when you drop, it's your weight kind of landing on his thigh as you're, you pulled and then your weight drops at the same time. So that, that sort of, you reach this peak here with my weight and then I drop, right? So the, the peak would be right when my hips reach their highest point and that's when I pull and push here as I drop. So there's a push and there's a pull and it all happens right here. It doesn't happen before or after, it has to happen like at the same time. So I'm here like this. A lot of times this one works best when you, they have a De La Hiva position, like they're kind of driving into De La Hiva and you extend away and you have, it in this, you have it in this foot first, or I have this foot first with my left hand, but then I just switch. And then he's gonna try and settle back into me here, and that's when I'm gonna go up, like that. Okay, give it a shot. Yeah, so yes, exactly. See how when you drop, the ankle just kind of comes out? That was perfect. I don't know why it works like that, but it's like as your weight kind of goes up, his ankle gets really light. I think it's because you're posting on his other thigh. So all of his weight is going to that foot, you know? That was very good. Are you switching from here and pushing, doing there? Yes, yeah, exactly. What's that? I thought that's what I saw. Yeah, do, go ahead and do it for me, just so I can see if it's working right. Yes. So, oh, that was almost perfect. That was like kind of more of like a scissor. But I saw what you did there. You, you kind of kept your right leg bent, but your right leg has to go it, it straight at a certain point. So a lot of times this works best from like De La Hiva first, and he's kind of pressuring into me and I'm, I'm extending away with this leg to like straighten the De La Hiva. And then I shift everything to this ankle. And then he's gonna kind of step in again and I'll be here. And then I step that leg back, swing up, Actually, bring that leg forward a little bit. So I'll like swing up, and I'm gonna step that leg as I swing up. So 
watch, as I, my hips go up in the air, I kick and that leg drops back. So as what's happening is this leg is becoming very light because I just made all of his weight step on that foot. So it's kind of like a sweep where I'm here, step a little closer, here, like this, that leg's gonna step, come back. So I swing up. So I have to kick with that leg to create this happening. See what I mean? Go ahead and try. Extend, nice. So put that foot on the hip and then you're just gonna shoot this leg up, swing up and then kick the right leg and pull the ankle. Yes. Uh, yeah. And then switch, much better, right? So Brenda, you're kind of experiencing the same problem I saw a few other people experiencing, where, go ahead and come here. Your leg was fully extended, but when you're trying to do the move, so your leg was fully extended and then you're trying to pull, it can't really work like that. What has to happen is he needs to be able to step in where his leg is close and all the weight is on this leg, right? So you can see all the weight is here on this near ankle. I'm gonna swing my leg up, but as I swing my leg up, I'm gonna kick with my right foot to help me go higher but also, it's gonna watch what it does to his weight. All his weight goes over there. And then on the downswing, I'm just rotating, letting my weight drop, and I'm gonna pull his ankle at the same time because the ankle will be super light. So it has to happen like that. Otherwise, you kind of get that weird, like, am I going to De La Hiva? What's happening? It was, yeah, your right leg. You, you, want, you kind of like want him to settle in for a second and then get this and then swing. And that's what, the swing and the push at the same time is what makes the leg light that lets you pull the ankle quickly, which creates the kind of sweep effect there. That was, that was better. And then just like try and do it with a little bit of momentum. So you pull that leg and give him a solid kick so he falls there. So it would be like this, like, here, come here, Brenda. So I do the move, I catch the, the ankle, I pull her down, go ahead and fall. I have to just be ready to like tuck this foot here when she falls and then quickly be here. So I just let go of the ankle and bring it over and just move that leg out. But also, I mean, it's possible that she's just gonna get your leg anyways. It happens. How many times? Thousands a year? This, yeah, I don't think you understand how good this sweep is. I, this is like the only sweep I hit. I hit it thousands of times a year. It's like, I just see it everywhere. I constantly hit people with it. No one ever even recognizes it's a sweep because it looks so subtle. It just looks like you tripped them or just like grabbed their ankle, because you did. But it's so good and no one does it, but I do this sweep all the time. It is my most used move of all moves ever, this move. It's, like, it's gonna happen, but you, you just need to follow it up and like quickly step to that side with a back step. The longer you just kind of pause, the more time she's gonna to have to set up her moves and like set up the single leg X. So if you have momentum on your side, it's probably best to just use that momentum. If you recognize she's gonna get your leg anyways, just go all the way up and over to the other side and try and like grab her head or do a back step or something. Okay.